So what happens right now? Let's ask our market watchers, Rebecca Walzer, Scott Martin over at the CME, Ted Weisberg at the New York Stock Exchange. Ted, I mean, I had whiplash just following the markets today. What happened? Well, I think uh, clearly uh, we were deep in the hole uh, coming into the session, Neil. Uh, but uh, as the day progressed, or we actually almost got positive at one point. You know, I think at the end of the day, you know, clearly the tariff issue is, is a huge issue. But I think most people think it's uh, very political and we're into this major league negotiation. But as far as the market's concerned, the U.S. economy continues to be strong. Uh, the Fed on hold creates a very positive backdrop for equities. So when you add it all up, the markets will probably continue to climb this wall of worry. And the tariff issue, I think the market is telling us one way or the other will get resolved in a positive way. All right. Now, always it gets to be, as you and I have discussed in the past, we're back on the trust but verify thing, right? In other words, you have to get the Chinese to deliver the goods and make sure they're doing what they say they will do whenever that comes. What do you think? I think absolutely, Neil. I mean, th what this is about is basically, you know, the Chinese wanting the tariffs released as soon as the ink is dry on this deal. And the U.S. saying, let's see that you're actually performing before we actually release these tariffs. And so there you saw some back backpedaling from the Chinese. And Trump is calling a spade a spade and saying, no, no, no. And let's remember why you're here at this table in the first place, because we do have some authority and some pressure that we've been leveraging on you. And I can do it again. And I think that he is just playing the art of a negotiator. These are the labor pains that come naturally with a deal of this magnitude. You know, Scott, the underlying economy here is the end of the world, and we saw that with the employment report on Friday, the lowest unemployment rate since, well, a century before you were born. And and <laughs> it continues. And I'm wondering if that was the backdrop it. that emboldened the president to go ahead and up the ante with the Chinese. Uh, do you see any issues with that? No, um, other than something Kudlow said, uh, Neil, last name basis, I guess he and I are, are on, which is... <laughs> We have the most leverage, you know, we have that China has more to lose. That's something we've heard a lot today, and that may be true now, but face it, my friends, China's getting uh, more deft with their trading partners that they have outside of the U.S. I mean, South Korea is a major one, Hong Kong, India even is a major increasing trading partner of ours, and we still don't make a lot of things here. I know we're trying to bring jobs back, I know we're trying to bring more manufacturing to this country, but the fact remains, this is a big paradigm shift if we were to move away from China if a deal does fall apart. So that's why I thought you saw the market react so swiftly today on the anticipation that maybe a deal was going to fall off the table because it's not as simple as just shifting all that activity to other countries if, say, things don't work out here with China. You know, Ted, you reminded me of this in the past, but it is uncanny, isn't it, that the better prospects look for a trade deal with China, the better stocks look. The worse or suddenly the, 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 the surprise that it might not happen or happen so soon, the worse they look. So how is this battle going and what if it significantly delays? that we get a deal, but it's significantly delayed. Well, I think, you know, first of all, clearly there's a new sheriff in town, and I think uh, the world's politicians and bureaucrats don't quite know how to react to him. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think cooler heads will prevail, and there'll be a deal. I mean, we don't know what form it will take, you know, but everybody's playing this big high-stakes negotiation game. But at the end of the day, it's in everybody's best interest that the U.S. has a deal with China. And I think that will trump, I hate to use that expression, no. all, 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 the other, all the other sidebars. At the end of the day, they're going to get something done. You know, it, these things just don't happen uh, when we expect them to. No, they don't. You know, Rebecca, it's interesting when I was looking into this and talking about, obviously, in, in, in the Dow Jones Industrials, those are 30 international players, many of whom are directly exposed uh, to, to what's happening in China. But way beyond that, I was surprised how much China comprises uh, in revenues, the likes of Intel, 24 percent, Qualcomm, 65 percent, Micron, 51 percent, Wind Resorts, more than 70 percent. Apple in excess of 21 percent. We have a lot on the line here, don't we? You know what, Neil, you're just highlighting the fact that our two economies are so interdependent and therefore all the more reason that we need fairer trading terms and to live off of and go forward off of an agreement where they're not being treated like a third world country with the World Trade Organization, that we are getting what is fair. When I say fair, you know what I mean. We have been taking advantage of intellectual property, all of the things that have been happening. And so the fact that our, our big, uh, you know, Dow 30s are so integrated with the Chinese market is not a surprise. 
Please. And it is is all the more reason that we absolutely have to get this deal, and it has to happen. And we just I, I understand that it's political and that it's painful, especially for farmers and soybean, you know, producers. But it is a necessary evil that we get this deal finally done and signed. All right. We shall see what happens a little bit later in this show. We're going to talk to a top economist. Who-